CFOP, Roo, and ZZ are the big three methods of speed solving. The big three used to be a big four with the Petrus method as well, but we don't talk about that anymore. Cubers starting out are often confused on which method they should go for, especially because there's conflicting things such as ZZ has no rotation, so it's the best method, or Roo is the best because it has the lowest move count, or CFOP is the best because it has a more algorithm-based approach which is faster than thinking. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to make a more informed decision on which one is the best for you. So first I'll give an overview of each of these methods, and if you already know how the methods work, then just skip to this time in the video. CFOP is similar to layer by layer, or the beginner method, where we start by making a cross, and then we insert corner and edge pairs together like this, and just do that four times around the cube. After the first two layers, we do one algorithm to solve the top, and then one more algorithm to solve the rest of it. With the Roo method, we start by making a square here and extending it to a bigger block with these pieces. And then once you've made that, you do the same thing on the other side. Because some pieces are unsolved here compared to CFOP, you have access to much more tricks such as that. Next, we solve all of the top layer corners and then orient all the edges, which means getting all the white and yellow to the top. And then we solve the left and right edges that go here. And then we solve the rest uh, just intuitively, which I'm not going to be teaching here. With the ZZ method, you do something that, if you don't know how it works, looks a little bit like magic, but it's called Eoline, and that's when you do some moves that don't solve anything, but turn all of the edges into good edges, and that means you'll never have to do a cube rotation again. There's a full tutorial on that here if you want to know how that works, but that's beyond what this video is going to teach. Then you also solve the front and back edges. From here, it's similar to CFOP, except you can do intuitive block building as well. So here, I'm just going to insert this one in here, and there's more freedom than with CFOP. For example, this cross edge is not done, so to pair up these two, I can just do something like this and set them up and insert. Once you get to last layer, your edges will be oriented already, and that means you can use a lot more tricks such as ZBLL or COLL. And the last layer besides that is the same as CFOP. So let's look at some of the facts about each of these methods. CFOP takes about 55 to 60 moves, Roo takes under 50 moves, and ZZ takes 45 to 55 depending on how many algorithms you're willing to learn. Trust me, you have to learn a lot to lower that move count. So from this alone, it looks like Roo and ZZ are clearly better than CFOP, but let's look at the next thing, ergonomics. In cubing, ergonomics describes how efficiently you are doing the moves. For example, a sequence such as M2, U2, M2 is three moves, but it is not very efficient because it takes a long time to do it compared to another sequence like R prime, U, R prime, which can be done like this. So even though they're both three moves, they take different amounts of time, so clearly it really matters what moves you're doing. In the Roo method, we have a lot more MU moves, and in the CFOP method, we have a lot of RU and LU sequences of moves. So the question is, are MU moves slower than LU and RU moves? And the answer is yes. I could give you a very simple example, which is my J perm takes about 0.6 seconds and so does my U perm. But the U perm is with MU moves and actually uses about half as many moves as the J perm. The reason MU moves are slower is because every single move is some sort of finger flick. So for example, M prime, M2, and M, they all just use your fingertips. And same thing for U prime, U2, or U. This means you are repeatedly flicking your fingers, and that means when you do, for example, M prime, if you have another M prime coming, it's coming two moves later, which means you have the time of one move to reset your finger. And once you're turning really fast, that really starts to hinder your turn speed when you keep having to reset your fingers, and that is a finger movement that is not being used for turning. But if you're doing, for example, R, U, and F moves, then when you do an R move, then that gives your index finger time to set up, and then afterwards, you can come back down, and you're, then your other hand might do a move, and then now this hand might go again. So very often you'll be alternating which fingers are actually working, and in between those finger movements, you will always have a wrist turn involved. And your finger turns may alternate so that your right index finger only gets used once every four moves instead of every two moves, then that's clearly faster as you have more time to reset your finger for the next time it will be used. And plus, wrist turns don't require any resets as you can just keep going like that. So now that we've gotten out of the way that MU turns are actually slower, that brings us to the next aspect of ergonomics, which is when you are not doing turns, or when you're doing cube rotations. With CFOP in F2L, you have to do cube rotations, and well, like you don't have to, but there are times when it really doesn't make sense not to. For example, if I'm doing this F2L pair, and then I'm going to do red-green afterwards, there is no way of doing this that isn't faster than just doing a cube rotation and inserting. And every time you do a cube rotation, that's like re-gripping both of your hands at once. It is quite fast, but it's not as fast as continuing to turn. 
Now, if you run into a similar situation, if you're doing Roo, where this needs to use a rotation, if you were doing CFOP to insert it into here, pair it up like that and then insert. With Roo, you don't have to do that because you have the M slice available and you can take advantage of that to pair up pieces like this. And then even when it seems like you have to rotate, you can do more tricks in Roo like that. And so Roo doesn't use any cube rotations. And lastly for ZZ, after you do the magic EO line step, you will not have to rotate anymore because R, U, and L moves are all you need for the rest of the solve. So quick review, move count has Ru and ZZ winning, but then we added in MU moves and Ru got nerfed. But then we looked at saving rotations and now it definitely looks like Ru and ZZ are better. Maybe ZZ could even be the best. And I've thought this way before where I thought, hey, Ru and ZZ are clearly better in a lot of ways. But the thing we're overlooking for why CFOP is so good as well is because of regrips and look ahead. So first let's talk about look ahead. So move count and ergonomics are important, but none of that matters if you solve like this. Okay, you get the point. The less you pause, the more of the potential you hit with this method. So if we're in an instance like this right now, I can already see all the pieces I have left to solve. So then I can go through the rest of it without pausing. There are two things that make look ahead easier. Number one, the more pieces you have solved, the easier it is to look ahead. Now that's kind of obvious because you don't have to look at any pieces you've already solved. But in ZZ, because of the EO line step, you spend a lot of moves right at the start of the solve, barely solving anything. And therefore you have more places that you have to look at. So immediately that's a huge blow to ZZ's prospects. The next important aspect of look ahead is which blind spots have you solved. So for example, in CFOP, often how good solvers will begin their solves is with a cross as well as a planned back F2L pair. And once you have done this, then I talk about this a lot, but when you look at a corner and you find it, then you only need to find its edge. And that edge can be anywhere in the top or one of these two or here. So chances are just by looking from one side, you can see everything you need to see. And that's because all of the bottom edges are covered. We don't have to look there anymore. And we also have this back slot covered, which means we don't have to look there anymore. So we've covered most of our blind spots and really all we have left is the three slots we can mostly see as well as everything on top, which is moving a lot during F2L. Now with Rue, it's similar, it's better than ZZ, but not quite the same as CFOP, because when you solve your first block here, then you still have these bottom edges you have to look out for. So with Rue, it's still more manageable than ZZ, but you have more blind spots than you do with CFOP. So look ahead on Rue is also a little bit worse. So again, look ahead is important because you can't hit the ergonomic limit with your fingers unless you can somehow know everything you're going to do, which ultimately comes down to look ahead. And that's why at the higher levels of cubing, not so much when you're lower level, but at the higher levels, look ahead is the most important thing no matter what method you're using. All right, next is regrips. And this is the thing that I feel like nobody ever talks about for these three methods. The most important grip is home grip where both of your thumbs are in front. You have access to any U move you want and R and R prime or L prime and L are both pretty easy to do from this grip. With CFOP in general, you stay in this grip. And the reason for that is because anytime you move one of your hands up, then the cross edge moves up. And if you have to solve an F2L pair, that involves putting the cross edge back down at some point, and that ultimately restores you back to home grip. And so the important aspect of this is the cross edges on the left and right are already solved, and that is not true for Ru or ZZ. For Ru, one of them is done in the first step, so not so bad, but in ZZ, both of these are not solved for a while. So here, for example, in CFOP, these two, I'm going to pair them like this, and then insert into the back, so far no regrips. And then I have this pair, and a cube rotation, that's one regrip. And then I have uh, these two, and, and then lastly these two. So I stayed in home grip for most of that. I had a couple of cube rotations and just one regrip at the end, and that was all of F2L. And because of that, the maximum turn speed of CFOP F2L is higher than with ZZ F2L or Ru first two blocks. Okay, so since I don't actually use Ru as my method, I don't know what are the most common things to happen, but here's just one example I came up with. If you're trying to solve this and this into the right block, then you would have to do something like this. And okay, I probably didn't do that the best way possible, but I'm sure no matter how I did that, there would be at least two regrips. Now, once this is pointed out to you and you try to do ZZ solves, you will find that the ergonomics are worse than CFOP. Yeah, there are no cube rotations, but the regrips and the R2s and the L2s and the switching hands and having to regrip all over the place is just insane. The faster you get, the more ZZ doesn't feel like it's built for speed solving. So if we take these ergonomics into account, CFOP is still looking great, Roo is a little bit worse now, and ZZ just takes a huge blow again. So by now, I've pretty much covered all of the important facts, and what conclusions you want to draw from this is totally up to you. But then 
from here, using this information, I will tell you what I conclude. I think that with how similar CFOP and ZZ are just as methods and the order that you do everything, a lot of the more important things at high level, which is not quite the move count, but more on the ergonomics and look ahead side, ZZ absolutely loses in this. I draw the conclusion that CFOP is much better than ZZ. But just looking at the facts here, I cannot conclude that RU or CFOP is better than the other one. I feel like with how different these two methods are, you'd have to start using empirical evidence from what good solvers are capable of doing and what you can project for the future uh, with better cubes or better finger tricks, better algorithms, and so on. Which is not something I think I'll be able to do accurately, and things change in the future, new things are discovered, so who knows. In other words, in the future, I wouldn't be surprised if RU ended up being the best method or if CFOP ended up being the best method. Now, as for which method you should pick, I've been talking a lot about theoretical stuff, and if you have some reason to believe that your fingers, just because of like medical reasons or something, you actually cannot turn faster than some other people can, then that is a justification for using Rue, as your fingers actually do not need to move quite as fast. And since Rue is more intuitive, if you don't feel like figuring out stuff and you just want to turn really fast, then CFOP would suit you better. But what I think is more important is which events each of these methods suits better. If you ever plan on practicing big cubes, M moves are simply not as good on big cubes. Now in 4x4, it's kind of fine because if you just hit the middle of the two layers, you are guaranteed to move the two layers, so it's not a big deal. But on 5x5, it is a lot harder to make sure that you have hit all the layers. And on 6x6 and 7x7, just forget it. And on Mega Minx, it does kind of follow like you make a star kind of like a cross followed by F2L pairs, and the whole solve is pretty much just F2L over and over. So I imagine that CFOP solvers would be better than Rue solvers on Mega Minx. But where a lot of people think Rue really shines is in one handed. Because most of Rue uses R, wide R, and U moves, then it's actually pretty good for one handed, as that means you don't have to rotate. For example, L moves one handed require you to rotate, and F moves require you to re grip a little. And also it seems like M moves may be a problem, but if you use a table, then you actually, not, not me, I can't do it, but people can do this. So really I think it comes down to what you're going to value more. Do you want to get better at one-handed or do you want to be good at big cubes? And yeah, there's really no place where ZZ is best. Some people have said it's really good for feet, but it's feet. So this is all stuff I really would have liked to know when I was switching to Rue, because back when I averaged about 18 seconds, I actually switched to Rue for a while thinking it was the better method. I just wanted to be unique for the sake of it, but now I'm really at peace with CFOP. I personally think that, at least for me, it is better on 3x3, or at least I will always be better with CFOP than I will be with Rue. I don't know if that is a different statement or not, but even if I've just made this more confusing for you, I hope this video was at least interesting. Oh yeah, and some of you guys are going to mention Eocross for ZZ and how it might be better for two-handed, and while it does remove the ergonomic problem, it does suffer from a lot of the other problems ZZ still has. And I've tried using it before, doing inspection is an absolute nightmare. Feel free to yell at me in the comments. Alright, thanks for watching, I hope this was helpful for you, and I'll see you guys all next time.